Greetings, cadets. When the Enterprise leaves dry dock in Star Trek The Motion Picture, there is a startup sequence where seven sets of floodlights light up. It's an iconic scene which many model builders try to emulate when building the 350 scale Enterprise refit. Our new Starship 04 sketch includes this dramatic sequence and times the floodlights exactly in order to recreate the scene perfectly frame by frame. Thanks to Baz R for suggesting this, as it is a worthy addition to our final circuit board. And thanks also to Mr. E for helping me clean up my rather messy code. So, without any further ado, let's get cracking. We have hit a small bump in the road to lighting the Enterprise refit. Once finished, the Arduino will be driving nine navigation LEDs, four strobe lights, and the deflector dish and warp crystal LEDs. For a board with a maximum total output of 500 milliamps, the floodlights are going to push the limits. So, we need a unique solution to a unique problem. Luckily, there is an answer in the form of the ULN28038 chip more commonly known as the Darlington Driver Array. The following circuit is a Darlington Driver circuit. We notice that the circuit has its own pull-down resistor to prevent accidental activation of the circuit and a diode. When components such as motors are shut down, a small backward surge of power occurs, known as inductive reactance, which could fry the Arduino's AT megachip. To prevent this from happening, diodes are included in the circuit, which only allow current to flow one way. The ULN28038 chip has an array of 8 of these Darlington driver circuits built in. The chip acts just like a MOSFET, in that current from an external power supply is switched on when any of the base pins are activated, similar to the activation of a MOSFET's gate pin. When we look at the chip, we must remember that the notch on the chip tells us where pin 1 is. Moving down the left side of the chip, pins 1 to 8 are all base pins. When any base pin is activated, it allows a current to flow across an LED which is connected to the pin directly opposite that base pin. The opposite pin is known as the collector pin. Pin 9 of the chip needs to be connected to the ground rail, while pin 10, known as the common diode pin or emitter pin, connects to the external 9 or 12 volt power source via the Arduino V-in pin. Each collector pin of the Darlington driver array chip can handle a current of 500 milliamps, up to a maximum of 2500 milliamps total for the chip so it can easily drive a large amount of floodlight LEDs and each pin can handle a voltage of up to 50 volts, which is more than ample for our 9 or 12 volt circuits. Seeing as we only have 7 floodlights and 8 sets of base and collector pins in the Darlington array, we do have one extra set of pins to spare. If we want, we can use this for any of the other LEDs which may need a higher current flow, such as the nine navigational lights on the Enterprise refit, for example. And that's all we need to know in order to boost the juice and to make bright and shiny floodlights. Overing thrusters, sir. All station. Thrusters at station keeping, sir. We will add the LEDs for the floodlight sequence to the same breadboard used for the Starship 03 sketch. We will need the following extra components. 7 by 3 mm white LEDs, 
7 resistors. For a 9 volt circuit, the resistors must be at least 220 ohms each and at least 330 ohms for a 12 volt circuit. Using resistors with these values will ensure that the LEDs glow at their brightest while operating at a safe voltage. We can, of course, use higher value resistors if the LEDs are too bright, such as the famous 470 ohm resistors for 9 volt circuits and 680 ohm resistors for 12 volt circuits. Finally, we need a ULN2803A Darlington driver array chip. In this segment, we'll be turning the Arduino's analog input pins into digital output pins. Let's examine the analog input rail of the Arduino Uno for a moment. In our sketch, we will define analog input pins A0 to A5 as digital output pins 14 to 19 respectively, which will be enough pins to run six of our floodlight LEDs. Unfortunately, when used as outputs, these pins aren't capable of pulse width modulation. We will control the seventh floodlight LED by using Arduino pin 8. So, let's get started. We add the Darlington driver chip to the breadboard in such a way that it straddles the gutter. We remember to use the notch on the one side of the microchip to guide us, as leg 1 is always the leftmost leg right next to that notch. And we insert the chip in such a way that base pins 1 to 8 face the Arduino. At this point, we need to make sure that our Arduino is not connected to any form of power supply. We connect leg 9 of the chip to the ground rail of the breadboard and leg 10 to the high voltage rail, that is, the one connected to the V-in pin of the Arduino. We connect a jumper wire from pin 14 of the Arduino Uno to base pin 1, which is leg 1 of the Darlington chip. We connect Arduino pin 15 to base pin 2, and so on, until we connect Arduino pin 19 to base pin 6, and finally Arduino pin 8 to Darlington base pin 7. We add the positive anode, which is the longer lead of each LED to the high voltage rail of the breadboard. Likewise, each negative cathode gets inserted into its unique row on the breadboard. We connect a resistor from each row across the gutter and into the row on the opposite side of the breadboard. Now, to complete the circuit, we connect the resistor of the first floodlight LED to collector pin 1, which is leg 18 on the Darlington driver array, opposite its base pin on leg 1. We continue connecting each subsequent LED in the sequence to the next collector pin of the Darlington chip until the final floodlight LED is connected to collector pin 7, which is Darlington leg 12. Let's connect our Arduino Uno to our consoles. Now we can finally right click on the Starship 04 link in the description, select copy link location and paste the link into our browser's address bar. We click the download button and save the sketch to our Arduino working directory. We open the sketch using our Arduino GUI, move it to its own directory and upload the sketch to our Arduino Uno. Let's disconnect our Arduino from our consoles and connect it to our external power supply. We notice that our strobe and navigation lights start up first, followed by the floodlight sequence. The floodlights light up one by one, keeping time frame by frame with a sequence from the dry dock in the motion picture. The deflector dish ramps up just as the last floodlight LED is activated. Let's slow the sequence down by a factor of 4 and examine it in more detail. The first set of floodlights lights up the outside of the nacelle pylons. The second set of floodlights shines from the front of each nacelle to hit the back of the secondary hull saucer.
The third set of floodlights is situated towards the rear of the forward photon torpedo bay and lights up both sides of the neck. The fourth set of floodlights shines from the back of each nacelle to light up the registry on the nacelles. The fifth single floodlight is located at the bottom of the saucer and lights up the lower registry, followed by the sixth single floodlight which lights up the registry on the upper saucer. And finally, the seventh set of floodlights lights up the Starfleet emblem on both sides of the primary hull. We're not quite sure where these floodlights are situated, but the best guess is also from the front of the nacelles, adjacent to the second set of floodlights which lit up earlier. There's a link in the description for a downloadable PDF file which contains all of these diagrams and reference pictures for the floodlight sequence, which might prove useful later. When viewed from another angle, we can see that the strobe and navigation lights start up first, followed by the floodlight sequence, and then the deflected dish LED ramps up. As usual, button number one switches between warp and impulse modes. while button number 3 fires the phases, and button number 2 the photon torpedoes. And there we have it! A perfectly timed set of floodlights, and enough power to light them up as brightly as we please. The effect will be memorable to everyone who sees the model, and I definitely feel it's worth all the effort it entails. So long and thanks for watching.